Hey guys, what's going on? Andy Baker here of andybaker.com, an owner of Kingwood Strength and Conditioning. And uh, what I'm going to do today for you guys is a really quick, um, well, maybe not really quick, but an impromptu and kind of unscripted uh, video on what to do uh, during this whole coronavirus thing where a lot of you guys have lost access to your gyms. So what I'm hearing from a lot of my clients, and this is really who this video is for, is from my clients and members of my online coaching group, um, is what do I do now that my gym is closed and I don't have access to all my normal barbell training equipment? Um, you know, what can I do in the interim? So uh, what I want to do today is give you guys some tips, some ideas, some workouts on what you can do during this time to maintain your strength and fitness level as best you can. Um, so the, the big question that I keep getting asked from a lot of you guys is, am I going to lose my strength during this time? And if we go a week, two weeks, a month without access to the barbell lifts, uh, yeah, you're going to lose some of your top end strength. Um, so if you're used to, you know, squats and deadlifts with three, 400 pounds and, you know, benching and pressing with 200, 250 pounds, yeah, you're going to lose some of your strength if you don't have access to that heavier equipment. You just, uh, you can't preserve those higher end strength adaptations without the loading. So. That doesn't mean that you should not train at all though, just because these workouts are gonna be a lot different than what you're used to. So with the dumbbell stuff, with the body weight stuff, there's some things that we can get out of that that maybe we don't get with kind of the heavier barbell based workouts. Um, and those can actually help your transition back into barbell training as opposed to just taking a month off from the gym. So aside from the physical, um, the, the physical, drawbacks of just taking a month off or two weeks off from the gym uh, there's also kind of the behavioral aspect of uh, for a lot of you guys that have a hard time getting to the gym uh, sometimes a, a, a week off two weeks off a month off from the gym turns into six months off a year uh, and we don't want that for you guys that love to train that love to work out this is not necessarily a problem but for a lot of the clients that I work with you know, sometimes consistency is our biggest, is our biggest enemy is that, uh, guys have lapses of a month or two here and there, six months, a year, even where they're not training. And now we've got some traction going with being consistent with our workouts, training two, three, four times a week. And then this happens and it can be one of those things where it's not just a month out of the gym, it's a year out of the gym. So under those circumstances, what you really want to do is make sure that you're doing something just to reinforce the behavior of training regularly and getting to the gym regularly. So although the circumstances may not be ideal, um, all is not lost. There are some good things that can happen with kind of body weight dumbbell type training. Like I said, that maybe you don't get with the heavy barbell training. So there's some positive adaptations we can get um, in terms of building up our work capacity, in terms of even adding muscle mass um, <clears throat> that can help the transition back into uh, heavier training. So yes, you're going to lose um, some of your top end strength, but the more you can do now, the faster you're going to regain that top end strength when you get back into regular training. So if you guys <clears throat> will bear with me a little bit um, in terms of this video, towards the end, what I'm going to get into is I'm going to I'm going to demonstrate and show you guys some specific exercises you can do with very limited equipment. Um, show you guys some routines that you can do. Um, you know, so you can put together something that's kind of organized uh, two to three times a week. Uh, so I'm going to get to that here in a little bit. But what I wanted to go over with first was just some just some basic concepts about doing these types of workouts. For a lot of you guys that are used to training with only barbells, you may not have a lot of experience, a lot of context doing anything else other than kind of regular heavy barbell training. So my hope is that, um, you know, I can kind of point you in the right direction here and give you some ideas about how to make this stuff more effective so you're actually getting something out of it, okay? So I just made a quick list in no particular order of just some things to think about. Uh, so we're gonna go over this and then we're gonna get into some specific routines. So um, first of all, with, uh, you know, with the heavier barbell stuff, you're obviously, most of the time, you're doing lower rep type things. So a lot of five rep sets, maybe three rep sets. Sometimes we go eight to tens, things like that. But uh, with the dumbbell and body weight stuff, you're obviously going to be doing a lot more repetitions. Okay? You're going to need that volume to kind of get, get an equivalent stimulus of what you might get out of something heavier. So really what we're going for, 
Um, we need to work a lot closer to failure. You need to push with those higher reps. So you don't necessarily have to push right up until failure, but you need to get into where you're doing some more difficult reps um, with these lighter weights in order to make them kind of an equi equivalent stimulus. So what, one thing I would, uh, I would tell you, and I'm gonna get into some specific rep ranges and stuff like this with some of the other exercises uh, that I'm gonna point out, but if you guys are unaccustomed to this type of workout, if you're used to doing, say, only sets of five, uh, just be a little bit careful when you first start introducing sets of 10, sets of 15, sets of 20, sets of 50, uh, that sort of thing. You know, you can ease your way into that. You don't have to start, uh, you know, shooting with both barrels right from the beginning. But you're, gonna, you're, you're definitely going to want to focus on all this stuff of building up your reps. You're not going to have load as a, as a way to uh, progress these exercises. So you're going to have to progress via reps. And that's really going to be the only thing that's going to make this more effective over time. Um, if you've got to do these workouts for two, three, four, five, six weeks is to increase the rep is to increase the amount of repetitions that you're doing. So, um, but just be careful about that. Um, other things that, uh, you, you should probably try to do when you're doing these, uh, dumbbell workouts, body weight workouts is that when we're doing barbell exercises, typically we'll do one exercise at a time. So you do a set of five, you rack the bar, you rest two, three, four, five minutes. Then you go back and do another set. So typically with this type of stuff, um, I'm gonna have people do more of a circuit-based training stuff, be circuit-based training style. Uh, and basically what that means is we're gonna take anywhere from, I have clients when I have them do this type of work in the gym here, I'll have them do anywhere from two to six exercises. And you're just doing one exercise back to back to back to back to back, kind of without stopping, kind of a CrossFit-esque uh, style of workout where you're trying to move at a fast pace. The reason being the weights aren't that heavy and we're gonna to try to build up kind of a, a conditioning, endurance, work capacity um, type of adaptation. So uh, to make these more effective, you're not, again, we're not really gonna be focusing on building up our max strength, so we don't really want to take a lot of rest. We're gonna be trying to build up uh, endurance, both muscular endurance and cardiovascular endurance as part of these workouts. That's gonna be one of the side benefits of doing these workouts is that we can get a better cardiovascular adaptation from, from working at a faster pace. So, um, so I'm gonna show you ways to kind of put together some circuits. Uh, supersetting is basically just two exercises, so that might be like a body weight row and push up, something like that. Um, so taking two exercises and moving back and forth between those, a circuit is basically anywhere from three to six exercises, just moving between the stations with little to no rest. So to, just to try to build up that conditioning and endurance aspect. Um, other things we can do with the dumbbell, so when we, we start to get uh, into the dumbbell work, a lot of you guys may have a lot of dumbbells. You might have anywhere from 10 to 50 pounds. If you've got a big range like that, you can make these workouts more effective. If you've only got like one set of dumbbells, say you have a pair of 20s and that's it, it's not ideal. You can still make it work. What's going to happen is that you're going to find that maybe that one pair of dumbbells that you have is too heavy for some exercises and maybe too light for other exercises. So you just have to do the best you can and kind of make the, the sets and reps fit the load that you have and the exercise that you're trying to do. Um, but things that we can do, if you've got a light weight that's not very challenging, um, yes, we can add more reps. Yes, we can kind of increase um, the tempo between exercises uh, so that you're moving on you know, little to no rest time uh, between movements. But the other thing you can do is increase the tempo of the of the repetition itself, the tempo of the actual exercise that you're doing. Um, and what do I mean by that is, well, we can make an exercise more effective both on the eccentric and the concentric, okay? And the, basically the rule for that is you can move the eccentric a little bit slower, okay? So let's just take a really easy example of a curl. So you've got a lightweight that you're trying to curl with, and maybe you could, if you, you know, if you just blasted them out, you could do uh, 30 reps with that. Well, if you slow down the tempo a little bit, slow down the eccentric, so maybe you're lowering that weight now on like a three to five count, you'll cut down the amount of reps that you have to do and make, make that weight a little bit more effective. So if you've got an exercise you're trying to do that has, that's a really light weight, you can slow down the eccentric phase of that movement and that'll make that movement a lot harder. Conversely, you can speed up the concentric, okay? So if you're doing say a squat, um, a step up, um, a Romanian deadlift, some of these other movements, you can speed up the concentric a little bit, make the movement a little bit more explosive. And again, that's a way to make that lighter weight just a little bit more effective. So if you're just moving, you know, kind of at a normal pace, a normal tempo, and then all of a sudden you start slowing down the eccentric 
and speeding up the concentric, you're gonna make each of those reps a lot more effective. So that's just a little thing you can do uh, to make the reps a little bit more challenging. Um, the other thing you can do is introducing static holds and isometrics um, in the middle of some of these reps. So, you know, that could, be, that could be held at any phase of the repetition. So you could hold the terminal phase of the movement. So um, let's just, you know, let's just say on a, uh, on a Romanian deadlift, you could hold the bottom end stretch position. So when you get way down at the bottom, you can hold that stretch position under load for a few seconds before you come back up. Okay, so kind of that stretch under load uh, is, is, can be very good for, for hypertrophy. So, and also just to work mobility. Some, some of the, the best mobility exercises in the world are exercises just done to a full range of motion. So, and emphasizing that stretch position. So, um, you can hold the, the lengthened position of the muscle. You can hold it in the middle of the movement. So, um, you know, coming up halfway, stopping, holding that middle position for five to 10 seconds of an isometric contraction and then coming back up. So introducing a short isometric pause in the middle of a rep range uh, can be good. And then even holding a peak contraction a little bit longer. So, um, you know, at the top of your bicep curl, instead of just coming up and going right back down, you know, kind of think like a bodybuilder, really come up and squeeze that movement hard at the top and then going back into that long, slow eccentric with a deep held stretch at the bottom, coming back up into a deep squeeze again. Manipulating the tempo, you can take a pair of 15, 20 pound dumbbell, dumbbells that's maybe not normally all that challenging for you and make it really, really challenging by changing the tempo. Okay, so that's just something to think about if you've got an exercise that feels a little bit too easy and you wanna make it a little bit more challenging. Um, rest, pause, and myo reps. Okay, these are kind of similar concepts. Um, the rest, pause sets, kind of the, the DC training. If you guys follow my own training on Instagram, you see I do a lot of rest, pause stuff. Myo reps is basically kind of a new, a new variation on that. But basically the principle is the same where you would do one kind of what we would call an activation set. Um, and this is typically, it, it varies on the exercise and who you're talking to, but it, it, in, generally, in general, we're gonna say between like eight and 20 reps would be kind of your activation set. And you're basically taking that first set to within a rep or two of failure. And then you're gonna take a very short rest after that. So let's say we do a, um, uh, let's say we do a squat for uh, 20 reps and that 20th rep is, is really, really hard. What we would do is set the dumbbells down and we would rest only like 30 seconds and then we would do another set and on, after that 30 second rest, we would aim for maybe half of the reps we got on that first one. So doing a set of 10, set the dumbbells down, rest only like 30 seconds and then do another set. So that's like a double rest pause uh, type of set. If, if you're... If the weight is the weights that you're using may or may not be heavy enough to make kind of the traditional double rest pause hard enough, then you would do something like myo reps, which is basically like a whole lot of little mini rest pause sets. So what you might do there is, let's say you're doing a uh, a curl and you you do 20 to 25 reps taken, you know, almost to failure. You set the weight down, rest 10 to 30 seconds, and then do like three to five reps, set it down, rest like 10 seconds three to five reps and set it down. And you can do that. There's a lot of different ways you can do that. You can, you can do the myo reps until you've hit a certain goal. Okay, so you say, all right, I'm gonna do 50 curls. And you do the first 20 or 25 kind of all in one burst on that initial set. And then you use little three to five rep sets on like 10 seconds rest to get you all the way to 50. Okay, so you just do as many little, those mini sets as it takes to get to whatever your goal is. You can do that or you can set a number of little myo rep sets. You can say, I'm gonna do uh, 20 to 25, taken to, you know, close to failure, and then I'm gonna do uh, five to 10 little mini sets of three to five. Um, you know, you can do it that way. So, or you can go until you have a performance drop off. In other words, you say, I'm gonna do myo reps in, uh, on 10 seconds rest for sets of, you know, three reps, and once I can't get three anymore, then I'm done, and you cut it off there. So there's lots of different ways. The, the idea is that you're gonna be training that muscle in a state of heightened fatigue. So the first set, that activation set, has to be taken pretty close to failure, if not to failure, in order to make the rest pause and the myo reps work. You've gotta take that set to failure or close to it and then take a very short rest, an incomplete rest, and then continue a bunch of little mini sets in a state of really, really heightened fatigue so that you're getting that full fiber recruitment. That's the only way you can really get that full fiber recruitment with a, with a light weight is to take those sets to failure and then kind of this would be kind of like taking them beyond failure in order to get more out of that set. So 
um, rest pause and myo reps can be uh, can be a good thing to do. That works really well with push ups because push ups is a movement where we can actually probably hit failure on. Some of the dumbbell stuff is maybe a little bit harder to do if it's real light. So, uh, but like push ups for myo reps would be really 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 good. So you do 25, 30 push ups wherever you kind of start to burn out. Install out, stop, 10 second rest, three reps, 10 second rest, three reps, and just kind of keep going until you fall off or you hit that numerical goal. So. Um, other things we can do, uh, pre-exhaust techniques, uh, that works really, really well. So I'm going to show you guys one uh, for, the, uh, for the chest using a dumbbell floor fly. So basically what that does, a pre-exhaust, uh, before I get into a specific example, what that does is it, it uses an isolation movement um, in order, it, it followed immediately by a more compound movement in order to fatigue the muscles that you're trying to work. Um, with an isolation movement before you go into the compound movement. And what it does is it allows you to reach failure with that compound movement with a much lighter weight. So as an example, uh, let's say you can do a lot of push-ups, um, and you really, and typically your triceps burn out before your chest does. And you really want to get some chest stimulus to help preserve your bench pressing strength and preserve your chest mass. One of the things that you could do is take a pair of dumbbells. You can do a flat floor fly. I'm going to demonstrate those. If you look at my Instagram, I've got a couple of uh, demonstrations of the flat floor fly. Um, but this was a Bill Pearl uh, favorite. Um, I stole it from my buddy Josh Bryant. But you can uh, you take a pair of dumbbells, lay on the floor, and basically go into a fly, hit the triceps on the bottom, pause for a second, come up, hold it together, down. You know, just a basic fly, but you're doing it flat on the floor. Uh, and let's say you do 10 to 20 reps of a floor fly until you basically hit technical failure to where you either can't do another rep or you're, you can't do another rep in good form. Set the dumbbells down, immediately turn over and go right into push-ups and go into failure. So that would be an example of doing a pre-exhaust technique uh, in, order to, in order to stimulate the target muscle with, with much lighter weight. So, um, so that's one example there. You could also do it with... Uh, um, you could do it with legs. It's a little bit harder to do with just body weight and dumbbell stuff. If you don't have, like one of the things that, that I like to do is do a bunch of leg extensions and then go squat. And you can actually get a really, really effective quad stimulus with a lighter weight on the squat. So it's a little less fatiguing because you're not having to use nearly as much weight on your back, but you still get a, a really, really killer effect uh, on the quad. So there's, uh, there's some things I'll show you with that as well in the lower body, how to use a pre-exhaust technique there. Um, but it's gonna work really, really well with chest stuff, okay? Um, another thing, full range of motion, okay? Uh, with these lighter weights, um, definitely want to use full range of motion on everything. So if you're used to doing, you know, there's no reason to do partial dumbbell squats. Take these things deep, you know, work every fiber stretched across the longest range of motion that you possibly can. Uh, when you're working with light weights, that's just a way to, to make these things uh, a little bit more effective. And who knows, in the process, maybe you get a little bit more flexible. Um, and then I would say focus on improvement of different goals, okay? So don't focus on the fact that you can't peak your top end strength, okay? You're just not going to be able to do that if you don't have barbells. Uh, but one of the things you can do is you can say, hey, I can't, um, you know, I can't build that top end strength. But what I can do is I can get in really, really, really ki killer condition right now by doing these body weight and dumbbell circuits. So you do the, the body weight and dumbbell circuits three to four times a week for a period of four to six weeks, you're going to actually have pretty good work capacity. You're going to be in pretty good shape. Um, again, and you're not going to lose a lot of muscle mass. So it doesn't take that much to maintain your muscle mass. You don't necessarily have to handle those really, really heavy loads in order to maintain muscle mass. It's a little bit top end strength and maintenance of muscle mass are two different things. So if you're doing hard workouts, you're pushing the muscles to failure or close to failure, you're, you're not going to lose a lot of muscle mass. Okay. And in some, some circumstances, a lot of you guys are actually probably going to build some muscle mass, okay? And you'll still lose some of that top end strength from not handling the really, really heavy weights. But if you can preserve the muscle mass, that's going to translate into bigger lifts down the road, okay? Um, at least that's the theory. All right. Um, so focus on, uh, focus on the conditioning aspect. And then, you know, it, we talked about the hypertrophy, the part of it. Um, you know, one of the things you can think of is, is, is parse it down even further is not even just you know total body hypertrophy, um, but uh, growth of a certain area of your body that's maybe a weak link, okay? It's hard to replace a barbell back squat, okay? I'm not gonna lie to you. You can do dumbbell squats, you can do that sort of thing, um, but it's really, if you're used to doing you know 15 rep squats with 315, it's really hard to replicate that with, with dumbbells. You do the best you can, but 
Um, there may be areas of your body where you can actually make some really, really good improvements because you can focus on some things now that normally you just kind of blow off and don't focus on. So let's talk about maybe triceps, okay? You can get some really, really killer workouts with just bands and dumbbells for your triceps and maybe over the course of four to six weeks, you really make some massive improvements on the size and strength of your triceps. So your bench still may go down because you're not handling those heavier weights, but when you get back into handling those heavier weights, and now you've got, you've got you know, bigger, stronger triceps, who knows, maybe that's the thing that, that spurs you over, uh, over the hump to some new PRs later. So focus on some things that you can do well, okay? Um, so you know, that, that might be an instance there where you focus on something small um, and actually turn a weakness into a strength and make, and make the best of a hard time. So, um, so that's just some quick thoughts here, guys. Uh, what I wanna do now is I'm gonna take a break in the video and I'm gonna get some equipment set up and I'm gonna show you some actual exercises and some routines that you can do uh, during this time to, to uh, replace your barbell exercises. All right, thanks. All right, so I hope everybody can see all this uh, stuff that I've scribbled up here. Um, but this is just uh, kind of a, a basic framework uh, for you guys to have some organization to your week uh, so that you're not just you know coming in and randomly um, grabbing the dumbbells and just kind of doing whatever you feel like. You're more likely, one, to, to get better results um, if you've got a framework and kind of a system and a schedule that you can work over the next two, four, six weeks, um, it'll give you a framework for progression uh, so that you're, you can kind of monitor things. You can adjust it a little bit as you need based on you know, how things feel or whatever, but um, it'll also help you, so not just from a, a, a training standpoint to make your training more effective, uh, but having a system and a schedule is gonna help keep you uh, in the gym, okay? Uh, my, my observation has always been that doing things randomly uh, tends to lead to a lot of uh, missed workouts and basically you know, falling off the wagon and not training. So having a system and a plan in place for the next you know, few weeks um, is gonna help you guys stay more regular and more consistent with the workout. So um, basically what I wrote up here was just kind of a Monday, Wednesday, Friday routine using a combination of uh, dumbbell and body weight uh, movement. So everybody's situation is gonna be a little bit different based on what you have access to. Some of you guys have a little bit more, some of you guys have a little bit less. So don't look at what I'm putting up here and necessarily follow it to a T, okay? Don't, don't be super rigid in your thinking. Try to see the, the kind of the conceptual framework that I put together and then plug and play um, the exercises that will work best for you based on kind of your own abilities and your own equipment situation. But so this is a good, this is a good, uh, reference point, but it's not necessarily meant to be followed to the letter. Okay. And I know a lot of you guys think like that. So try to divorce yourself from that kind of thinking right now. Um, okay. So basically if you look over here, this is kind of a general, uh, description of the muscle groups that we're going to work. And then I'll get into kind of the more specific exercises. Uh, as an example that you might use. So basically um, what we're gonna do is I'll, I'll put together a couple of circuits for clients. I actually have a lot of personal training clients that train this way. Now we don't use just dumbbells and body weight. Um, we'll use a combination of dumbbells, body weight, barbells, obviously machines. I have a lot of different equipment in this gym and so I throw a lot of different stuff at a lot of my personal training clients. So this is a framework though that I use for a lot of people uh, that, that works really, really well. So. What we might do is say like on Monday, um, this would represent like a circuit right here. So we would do a quad exercise, a chest movement, and a back movement. So basically your big muscle group. So if you just do, the, even if you just did those three movements that are focused on you know quads, chest, and back as a byproduct of working those big muscle groups, you're pretty much also gonna work all the smaller accompanying muscle groups. So we would do the bulk of our work here, um, doing a circuit of three exercises focused on the three big muscles. And then following that, we would do another circuit um, of, or a superset of two, uh, two other exercises. And on here, I put one for triceps and one for the PC, it's posterior chain. Okay, and again, I'm gonna go into the specific exercises in a little bit, but this is just uh, basically hamstrings and low back and then one for the triceps. Um, here on Wednesday, uh, what we would do is another quad movement. Um, and I'll show you the movement I like here for the, for the middle day. Uh, but this would be a much more shoulder focused day. So as we're doing a lot of chest stuff, Monday and Friday, middle of the week, we're gonna do some more shoulder stuff. So we would, if you guys are, would rather focus on your shoulders, you could flip flop that. You can, again, you can kind of do it however you want. This is just an example. Um, but we would do like a superset here of a, like quad and shoulder movements. 
and then another little circuit here, uh, maybe with another, another shoulder movement, um, biceps and abs, if you wanted to do that, okay? Um, on Friday, we uh, again kind of we kind of flipped the flip the roll a little bit, and I'll show you uh, why I did that. But we would start or we would end here with a, uh, a a small circuit for triceps and quads. And at the beginning, we would still be doing chest and back, but starting this time uh, with a posterior chain movement. So again, you don't have to do that. I'll show you my reasoning for doing that though here in a second. Um, so that's just kind of a general framework of the of the, the way you can uh, lay out a template so to, for and then plug for the body parts and then plug in whatever exercises you can do or you have access to. So now kind of a, we're gonna go in more specific movements here of how we would kind of fill in that template. Um, so starting on Monday, uh, the best thing that you can do for the legs probably in this situation is a dumbbell or a goblet squat, okay? And again, I'm gonna demonstrate some of these movements for you guys here in a little bit. Uh, but you're gonna do a, a weighted squat here. Uh, if you have access to dips, um, and you can do dips, then you can do dips here. If not, you do like a deficit push-up, and I'm, I'm gonna show you that as well. Um, for the chest, if you can't do deficit push-ups, just regular push-ups would work as well. And then any exercise you can do for the back. Some of the back exercises might be uh, challenging for you guys. Uh, if, you don't, if you don't have a chin bar or you can't do chins, um, then you, know, you would wanna do like some body weight rows. There's ways to do these with a bar or with a pair of straps or rings. TRX, uh, suspension systems, any of that kind of stuff. You can order cheap ones off Amazon. Um, you can order ones that hang in the door frame, that sort of thing. But like a suspension type system for doing body weight rows could actually be really, really helpful uh, during this time because that's a, a movement you can do a, a lot of reps with um, and not burn yourself out. And it works really, really good uh, as part of these circuits, especially for you guys that can't do a lot of chins or pull-ups. Um, or you could do a like a dumbbell row, and I'm going to demonstrate some dumbbell rows for you as well. But so this would be our quad, chest, back, plug and play your favorite exercises. For triceps, we might just do a lying tricep extension with a pair of dumbbells. Again, I'll demonstrate that in a minute. Um, and then uh, a posterior chain uh, exercise. So your two big ones that you're probably going to do are the Romanian deadlifts with dumbbells. Um, the other one you can do, I'm going to show you how to do a pull through with bands. So pull-throughs a lot of times are done with a cable unit, a selectorized cable stack. Uh, most garage gyms are not gonna have that. Um, and so we're, I'm gonna show you how to rig up a band and do pull-throughs with a band. It's actually surprisingly hard. Um, so a tricep movement here, like a line tricep extension, then a pull-through. If you guys have kettlebells, you could also do a kettlebell swing here. Okay, that would be a, a, a good movement to do. On um, Wednesday, what we're gonna do for the quad exercise is a step up, okay? What I like about step ups is on this middle day, is after you do a lot of these high rep goblet squats or dumbbell squats, even for you guys that do a lot of heavy back squatting, if you've never done a lot of high rep goblet or dumbbell squats, your quads are gonna be sore as shit, okay? And so step ups, I've actually found they're very, very much, they're almost like if you guys have ever done like a prowler or a sled uh, for recovery, you'll find that doing that after squatting actually speeds up the recovery because it's a concentric only movement or a concentric mostly movement. Um, and it, it's easier to do when you're really, really sore and it can actually speed up the kind of the healing and the recovery a little bit. And the step ups work a lot of the same way. They're not necessarily easy to do um, when you come in and your quads are really, really sore, but you'll find that by the end of your workout, your quads probably really won't be sore anymore and they don't really produce any new soreness. So step ups um, can be a real, you can do those with body weight or with added weight, but step ups are really, really good middle day exercise in here if you want to lay off the squatting. If you wanted to, you could squat again, perhaps use a different rep range um, if you wanted to, but uh, step ups I really like here. Um, and then for uh, the shoulder movement, uh, one of the things I'm going to show you, you can either just use uh, an, an overhead dumbbell press, so that's taking a pair of dumbbells and pressing it overhead. Super, super simple. If your dumbbells are really, really light, um, and maybe they're, you're having, find yourself having to do way too many reps where you feel feeling like you're just not getting much of a strength stimulus um, or a muscle building stimulus because the weight is so light. One of the things that you can do is perform a whole bunch of side delt raises first and then go right into the overhead press. So this would be an example of that pre-exhaust system. Okay, so maybe that's you know, 15, 20, 25 reps of a side delt raise and then either taking the same pair of dumbbells or a different pair of dumbbells, depending on what you have access to, but doing you know, 15, 20 reps, immediately grabbing the weight and pressing overhead with those exhausted, uh, pre-exhausted delts from all the side raises. That's an example of using that isolation movement 
to pre-exhaust those muscles to make the overhead press that much more effective. So whereas maybe those pair of 20s that you would normally get like 30 reps with, now maybe you only get 15 reps because you're doing them in a pre-exhausted state and those 15 reps will be probably more effective than the 30 were um, if you were doing them fresh. So that's one thing you can do if you don't wanna do the side belt raises. A lot of people don't know how to do them well uh, or they, they just, uh, they, some people get shoulder pain from them or, or whatever, they just don't like the exercise. You could just do uh, dumbbell overhead presses and do a lot of reps. Um, uh, if you're really strong and uh, you, know, would, you could do handstand pushups. Not a lot of people can do those. If you can, handstand pushups would work really well, uh, would work really well there also. Um, then for, the, uh, for the, the next circuit, what I would do is three, so two to three exercises here, depending on whether you do the side belt raise. Um, and then we would do, uh, next we would move on to a bicep movement. So that's probably gonna be a dumbbell bicep curl, hammer curl, however you wanna do it, doesn't really matter, a curl's a curl. Um, so uh, do some curls, some rear delts. I'll show you how to do some bent over rear delt flies. Um, and then an ab exercise if you want to. So it's a good, good opportunity to do some ab work. You can do sit-ups, lying leg raises, whatever you want to do. Again, it's kind of like, a, it's kind of like biceps. So do whatever, okay? Don't stress about it. Um, so that's typically how we would do that. Um, and then on Friday, uh, what I like to do is start with a Romanian deadlift, okay? Hopefully you've got enough, uh, enough weight to make, to make these actually uh, effective because a dumbbell Romanian deadlift is actually a really, really good exercise. So they're surprisingly hard, uh, even with a lighter weight. So some of you guys that have done these know, like it, there, there's not a one-to-one -one comparison between the, the weight that you would use for a Romanian dumbbell deadlift and the weight you could use with a bar. Um, for whatever reason, it's very much like uh, doing a dumbbell bench press and a barbell bench press. You guys that have done that know that the, the, the two weights are not a one-to-one -one comparison. So a guy that can do two 50 pound dumbbells is gonna bench a lot more than 100 pounds with a bar. The same thing kind of happens with the, uh, with the Romanian deadlift. So even a moderate weight at high reps is surprisingly effective with a, with a Romanian dumbbell deadlift. So I'm gonna have you start the workout with these and you're gonna kind of just thoroughly exhaust your hamstrings and glutes with these Romanian deadlifts. And then on the follow on uh, circuit, I'm gonna have you do lunges. Um, and the lunges with pre-exhausted hamstrings is actually a really, really, really good way to make the lunge more effective. So you can actually get some really, really good hamstring and glute work by doing the, uh, a lot of my female clients love this. They love this when we do these circuits where we start with a Romanian deadlift and completely exhaust the hamstrings and glutes with these and then move into a lunge afterwards. So you'll know what I'm talking about the day afterwards from when you, when you recognize the soreness pattern. So it's really, really good stimulus for hamstrings and glutes to start with the Romanians and then follow on later with the lunge. So, um, but on this day, what we would do is start with the Romanians um, and then this would be an opportunity to do the pre-exhaust for the chest. So we just did a bunch of kind of straight set push-ups up here maybe. So today we do the pre-exhaust um, technique where we start with either a dumbbell floor fly or a fly using bands. If you've got bands, I'll show you how to do that. Um, you can use a band fly or a floor fly and then superset that with push-ups. So this would be kind of like one exercise. And then again, your third movement uh, would be the either a row, so it's kind of the same as here, a dumbbell row, a body weight row, or chins. So some, a back exercise, whatever you can do, whether that's a, a, a row or a chin, again, it's based on your strength level and your equipment situation, but this would be the posterior chain, the chest stimulus, and the back stimulus. And then again, we would do the lunge here. Um, we're gonna do a reverse lunge when we do these, or a walking lunge, okay, and I'll show you the difference. Um, of how I like the lunges to be performed so that we're actually getting a good hamstring and glute stimulus. Uh, and then another tricep exercise here. So we're doing triceps twice a week because I get, again, I think this is maybe a good opportunity for some of you guys to build up your triceps, which can help on uh, your bench and pressing movements when you get back into your main uh, barbell based routine. Um, and I would just tell you to do them from two different angles. So maybe uh, on this day, on Friday, you do it an overhead. Uh, an overhead extension and here you do them lying. So just put the shoulder in a mechanically different position and it'll slightly shift the emphasis um, of so where it's working on your triceps and also maybe more importantly, it keeps your elbows healthy. So a lot of this high rep stuff, especially a lot of the high rep isolation stuff, if you're not used to it, especially with triceps, people's elbows tend to get a little bit cranky. So one of the ways you can do that instead of just doing less, just do different. So um, do your tricep extensions from different angles and that can a lot of times keep that kind of chronic nagging inflammation from creeping up. Or if you do the same movements, especially if you're doing them at high volumes for a lot of sets and a lot of reps, 
if you do the same movements over and over and over again, that's where a lot of that chronic inflammatory stuff starts to pop up. So vary your movements up a little bit and you'll, you won't have as many issues uh, with all that kind of annoying, uh, nagging joint stuff that sometimes happens with this higher rep training, especially if you're not used to it. Um, so anyways, uh, let's, uh, I'm gonna move on now from this and let's go into uh, some of the exercises themselves. All right guys, so um, hopefully everybody can uh, see and hear me well. So again, I'm, uh, I'm doing this video kind of impromptu with not a, lot of, uh, not a lot of rehearsal or scripting, so um, hopefully everything works out okay. But um, one of the things I didn't talk about in kind of the whiteboard lecture uh, was sets and reps and kind of goals for volume. Um, what I would say is a very general framework depend and again this this depends a lot on your strength level um, it depends a lot on what equipment you have available to you but if you're doing a lot of high rep stuff with light dumbbells and body weight um, what I typically do is a numerical goal of somewhere between uh, like 50 and 100 total reps um, with these circuits with these activities uh, and so what you would do is like on the big on the big circuits, like the one I'm fixing to demonstrate right now, um, is I would go through this circuit five times and do anywhere from 10 to 20 reps depending on the exercise. Now you could do a little bit more, you could do a little bit less. Again, it depends on your strength level and the equipment you have available to you. But if you go through five times and you do a minimum of 10 uh, reps per exercise, it's gonna give you 50 reps, or you might go up to 20 and that would give you 100 reps. Uh, it's actually a very fast, very efficient way to get a lot of work in. Um, again, if you're not accustomed to this, you might do that a little bit lower. You might go 25 to 50 reps the first time through and then slowly increase up to 50 to 75 reps and then 75 to, to 20 reps. And maybe if, if you're stuck doing this for a long time, uh, by the end of this, you're doing everything for 20 to 25 reps for five rounds and you're getting a 100 to 125, even 150 repetitions per movement per day. Um, again, that's not for everybody, but it is what's possible. I have clients that do that all the time. They recover fine from it. Um, and so it, it kind of just depends on your, on your starting fitness level and what equipment you have available to you. So anyways, um, we're gonna start with the first circuit that I had up there, which is gonna be the squats, the push-ups, and I'm gonna show you a row. So this one, I've just got a pair of 20 pound dumbbells here. Um, and so uh, you can just use, on this particular one, we're just gonna use the same pair of dumbbells. Again, if you, uh, if you have dumbbells of different weights, then you would ideally switch the dumbbells out based on whatever exercise you're doing to kind of match your strength level on that movement. But uh, for the dumbbell squat, um, two ways you can do this. You can take both dumbbells and just hold them in a front squat position, which would be like this. You hold them up like that, keep the elbows up high, or you can take a single dumbbell and do a goblet squat, which would be holding the dumbbell like this. This works really well too, okay? So again, just depends on what weights you have available to you, but we're just gonna do some weighted squats. I'm gonna do, a, uh, I'm gonna do both dumbbells here. I'm just gonna do 10 reps. Um, basically, you're gonna hold them like this. You can even turn them up like that to make it more comfortable if you're gonna do a lot of reps, but hold the dumbbells here, okay? And then we're just gonna squat. It's gonna be a much more upright stance. It's not the same mechanics as a low bar squat. So you're basically just squatting down and standing up. Then we'd go right into a row. And then right into a deficit push up. Okay, so I just did 10 of each one. Wasn't that hard, so my heart rate's already up. Um, but you could do, again, you could start with 10, go up to 15, maybe go up to 20. So I'm gonna change the equipment out, and we'll do the next circuit. Okay, so next circuit is gonna be our posterior chain movement with a tricep movement. 
So we're gonna pretend that I did five rounds of 10 to 20 reps of those first three movements. So now we're gonna go into our next circuit. This would be three to five rounds of this, same thing, 10 to 20 reps per set. Um, I've got a monster mini band here that's just rigged up to a fixed post. Just have to use what you have to figure out how to arrange it. Bands come in all different sizes, lengths, tensions. So you just have to figure it out, figure out a way to rig it up. You can put knots in it. If, it, if the band doesn't have a lot of tension in it, or if it's too long or whatever, you can put knots in it. You can wrap it around multiple times. So just be creative and figure out a way to put some tension on the band that works for you. But basically a pull through is gonna start here. You're gonna grab the weight this way, it looks kind of funny. Walk out till you feel some tension on there. Okay, so now I've got some decent tension and I'm gonna go down until I feel tension on my hamstrings. I don't want the band to slack, okay? So if I feel it going slack, I'm gonna move forward a little bit. Go down, feel some tension on the hamstrings, push the hips forward. Back. You guys have swung a kettlebell, it's the same motion. Again, if somebody that you don't know walks in and sees you doing that, they're gonna wonder what the fuck you're doing, but you're doing pull-throughs to work your hamstrings and glutes, and they actually work pretty well. You do five sets of 20 of that, your hamstrings and glutes are gonna be on fire. So, uh, 10 to 15, 20 of those, and then right into a tricep movement. We'll do the line tricep today. And again, if you guys don't have a bench, you can just do those on the floor. But that's circuit number two, three to five rounds, 10 to 20 reps per exercise, done with day one. All right, guys. Um, so we're gonna pretend now like we're on day two um, of the template that I laid out. So the first circuit that we're gonna do is gonna be shoulders and quads. And for the quad movement, we're gonna use a step up. Um, again, this is a good movement if you're really sore from all the squats that you did Monday, step up's a good movement to do on Wednesday. So uh, you'll find it's a good, you know, it's uh, a good strength development movement. Um, it's also, you'll find that if you do enough of them, it's actually really, really good on the cardio as well. So. We're gonna do, uh, you can do these weighted or unweighted. Uh, doing them weighted, pretty much do the same way that you would do, um, uh, you would do the squats. Uh, you can hold them up on the shoulders. That's the way I prefer it, is the step ups held up on the shoulders. You can also hold them down at the side. Usually I tell people to do these with the dumbbells up on the shoulders. Actually, if I'm, if I'm training a client with step ups, I usually have them do a barbell step up if we can, uh, because there's no way to cheat that. What happens with the dumbbells is that when people do the step up, they tend to swing the dumbbell, so they'll step up and they'll swing the dumbbell, and you'll actually find that that even makes it easier than if you just didn't have any weight at all. So if you're gonna hold them down at the side, keep them pinned down at the side and don't allow the weight to swing up and help you up. So the way I usually like to do step ups, do like five to 10 per leg. I have an 18 inch plyo box here, which for me is a good height, I'm short. If you were um, taller, you might use like a 24 inch box. Um, you know, if you don't have a plyo box, which if you're in a home gym like this, in this situation, you probably don't, just figure it out. Use something that's stable, don't fall down and kill yourself, but figure out a way to, to, to do it. If you can't, then just do more squats, okay? Um, so the step up, usually what I do is I'll do all the reps on one leg versus alternating legs. Um, I find that that's just better. It keeps kind of more tension or whatever you want, or more fatigue on the, on the working muscle versus alternating. Also, I find that people lose count all the time when I ask them to alternate legs. So I'll have them do say 10 on one leg and 10 on the right. And basically what you're gonna do is start here, you step up on the box and come up all the way, okay? And you do a 10 on that leg and then you would do 10 on the right leg, okay? I have people step all the way down versus keeping the leg up on the box because it tends to create this movement where you rock and push off of the back leg more. If you just, if you bring the foot down and do each movement like that, it tends to produce a little bit more strict movement. Um, as far as mechanics on this, uh, the big thing that you want to do is make sure that the leg that you're working straightens all the way out. So what a lot of people do want to step up is like this, and this typically results from trying to use too much weight, is they'll do a movement that looks like this. 
which is just kind of a step up onto the box and then do a partial squat. So make the working leg extend completely at the knee and the hip and then put the other foot up there. That's one rep, okay? So you're gonna do probably five to 10 per leg will be sufficient there. And then we're gonna go into a shoulder movement. I've got two pairs of dumbbells here. I've got, that's light, that's just a pair of 10s, that's a pair of 20s. And we're gonna do, um, you, could, you could just go right into the presses, so you do five to 10 there, and then grab the dumbbells, immediately go into just an overhead shoulder press. If that's really easy, like if you only have really light weights and you can do a ton of those reps, then what you do is maybe grab a smaller pair of dumbbells and do a side delt raise. Okay, on these what we're trying to do is get the elbows up higher than the shoulders. Control it on the way down, explosive on the way up. Do a lot of reps with those. So that's probably a 20, 25 rep exercise. 10, well maybe 15, 20, 25 on that. As soon as you're done, you last rep here, set it down, immediately grab the next pair and go into your presses. And these will be a lot more challenging doing them pre-exhausted, okay? So what we wanna do here, five to 10 per leg, 15 to 25 on the side delt raises, 10 to 20 here on the overhead presses. And again, just like on the previous day, we wanna go through that five times and your rep total is gonna be somewhere around 50 to 100 reps per exercise, okay? And then we would move on to the next, uh, the next part of the Wednesday workout, which would be our, our three exercise circuit. And for that, we're gonna do an ab exercise, which I'm not gonna demonstrate. Do sit-ups, leg raises, whatever you wanna do, 10 to 20 reps. Um, a bicep curl, okay? For biceps, again, I'm gonna demonstrate these even though I don't feel like I need to. But down all the way, so you get a full range of motion at the bottom. Elbows fully extended, deep stretch. Curl all the way up to the top. Slow on the way down. Okay, 10 to 20 reps there. And then you do a rear delt exercise, okay? Um, and for these, they don't, you typically can't use a lot of weight on these. Um, and so if it's too, if a rear delt fly is too heavy for the dumbbells that you have available, then just do another back exercise. Okay, but a rear delt fly, bend over here, take them all the way down, keep your torso roughly parallel to the ground. Okay, and again, 10 to 20 reps for five sets. Okay guys, so we're uh, on Friday's workout, so we're gonna start with a posterior chain movement. Uh, we did the pull-throughs on uh, Monday, so today we're going to do the Romanian deadlift with dumbbells. Okay, so these are going to start here. I'm going to demonstrate from the side. It's just like you're holding a bar. You're going to hold them kind of in this three-quarters position here. I don't really like them held out like front like that. I don't like them on the sides. I like them in this kind of three-quarter position right there. Okay, keep your back in extension. Push the hips back. So on a, on a, dead, on a Romanian deadlift, and this goes for the dumbbell version or a heavier barbell version. You're not bending over, okay, at the trunk. It, we don't initiate the movement like this. We initiate the movement with our hips. It's hips back, lower down as deep as you can while holding your back flat. A very slight bend in the knee, okay? I don't know if you can see it with the sweats on, but I have a very slight bend in the knee. It's not totally straight, but I'm not going down and bending at the knee to lower it to the ground. It's hips back, hips back. My weight is on my heels, my ass is way back. I take them down as deep as I can to get a stretch in the hamstrings and then push the hips forward. It's hips back, hips forward. That's gonna keep the tension on the hamstrings, okay? And again, this isn't very heavy. You know, if I really wanted to push myself, I could probably do 50 or 100 in a row. I wouldn't do that. I would just cut it off at 20, do five rounds of 20. That's 100 reps of a Romanian deadlift. You know, just call it a day if you, if it's not enough of a stimulus, go invest in some heavier dumbbells. You know, go to the store and get some heavier dumbbells. Um, but that's the Romanian deadlift. Then today is the example. What we're going to do is we're going to follow that up with a fly push-up combo. So we're going to do a dumbbell flat fly on the floor. Make sure you, you get a pause at the bottom. Very slight bend in the elbow. Okay, we're not taking them all the way flat like that. Don't do that. 
Okay, keep a slight pause. Okay, you would take those to technical failure, turn around, right into your push-ups. Okay, so that's, uh, that's one way you can do it. Also, if you have bands, if you have multiple bands, you can rig those up to where you can do a standing fly um, with band tension. So uh, I like the dumbbell version better, but you can use what you have and what you want to do. But the fly into the push-up would be the second exercise. Count that as one exercise. And then you go right into the dumbbell row that I demonstrated earlier in the video. Or like I said, you could use a, a, a TRX uh, suspension system or flash straps or rings or something like that to do a body weight row. Um, in, in this little combination if you wanted to do something different. So that is the first part of that workout. Again, uh, five rounds of that, 10 to 20 reps per movement would give you 50 to 100 reps per exercise, which is about right uh, for this type of training. Um, the next thing that we would do is another tricep movement. Uh, if you did the lying extensions on Monday, which I already demonstrated, then today you do an overhead extension Two ways to do that, take your dumbbell. You can go both arms. If you've got a heavy enough dumbbell, you can do a behind the head extension like that. If you've only got light dumbbells, then just do it unilaterally. Just one arm at a time. But you would do our tricep exercise and then pair that with a lunge. And so again, if you do a lot of those Romanian deadlifts, now we go into the lunge, you can do these with just body weight or you can do one uh, holding on to uh, a pair of dumbbells if you want to make it a little bit more challenging. But on the lunge, typically what people do when they do a lunge, and this is, it's literally the worst exercise in the gym. They do a version where they step forward and push back. Don't do that. Start here, do a reverse lunge. So if this is our working leg, we're gonna step back and pull forward. Step back and pull forward. That mimics a walking lunge. Okay, that's gonna get the quads, but it's also gonna get the glutes and the hamstrings, and it's far less stressful on the knees. This type of lunge here, very, when you push back like that, there's almost, there's almost no activation of the hamstrings and the glutes, and plus it tends to be very hard on the knees. That's why a lot of people don't like lunges. They, they'll complain that they're hard on the knees because the version they've always done is to step forward and then push back. Do the reverse lunge, always do the reverse lunge. Step back and pull forward. Step back and pull forward. It's a totally different movement. If you want to use a little bit of weight, you can hold them in your hands or you can hold them in the kind of the front rack position, however you want to do it. But it's the same movement. Step back, pull forward. Take the back knee all the way to the ground and pull forward. Keep the weight on the heels. You'll get a lot of hamstring and glute activation, especially if you do those after the Romanian deadlifts. Um, if, you, if you're not used to doing lunges, ease into them. They will cause a, tr a lot of soreness. So a lot of people who are pretty strong squatters and deadlifters are humbled by how much soreness um, lunges can create. So um, you, don't have to, you don't have to go full blast with the volume on those the first time you do them. Five to 10 per leg, that's 25 to 50 reps. If you do a five round circuit, it's probably good. Over time, you can bump that up to maybe doing 20 per leg, 100 per leg. Um, you know, by the end of your progression. Again, just depends on your strength level and where you're starting at. So anyways, guys, uh, that's it. I hope this has been helpful. Again, I moved kind of fast. It was kind of, it was kind of disjointed and, and quick and all that sort of stuff, kind of unscripted, but hopefully that gave you some ideas. Uh, if you have any questions, I'm going to put this up on YouTube. I'll put a link to it on my Instagram so you can uh, ask me questions there. Obviously, if you're in my online coaching group, and you want to ask me questions in there, I'll post this video in there as well. You can ask questions on there and I can kind of help you. Uh, I don't mind helping you guys modify it to fit your situation if you feel like you need some help or have questions about it. All right, good luck to everybody. Talk to you later.